What is good? I got a gangle of homies with me. How we doing, fellas? What's up, guys? Happy to be here. We got the Dynasty Theory guys. We got that fantasy dude with us. We're going to do a one-round mock draft, um, and then we're going to have a little roundtable discussion in a separate video that'll drop tomorrow, so be sure to like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, so without further ado, let's get this thing rolling. We had some TDs to some technical difficulties to get started with. So the wrong running kind a little of behind. Yeah, wrong kind of TDs. So I'm up first. Obviously, I'm taking Bijan. I don't think there needs to be too much discussion. Save it for the round table if you got a problem with it, pal. All right. <laughs> Terrible pick. This is super flex, so that would be the only reason that anybody would have any super flex tight end premium, one point PPR, all that, all that jazz. We'll keep it moving. Matt, I believe you are on the clock next. Who you got? I did take Bryce Young. Obviously, there's some some discourse about his size, um, but I think he offers the most upside of any of the quarterbacks for this for this draft class. I mean, you can make arguments about other guys offering more upside, but I think their downside is much lower than what prices would be going into the draft. Yeah, agreed. If I got to take a quarterback, it's probably Bryce. Yeah, it's too early to take anybody. It's too early. And I don't think any of the players are, are up at one Bijan's caliber to not take a quarterback here too. Yeah. All right. That fantasy guy. How you doing, bud? I'm all right, man. I decided to pick uh, CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud. All right. And I just thought he was just the safest pick for me out there since Bijan gone. I'm really, I really like Stroud over Bryce Young. And that's only because just feel like he's going to need to be an outlier to be overly successful. A lot of zero so, percentiles going around on Bryce Young. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm about the safe bet. So Stroud it is for me. All right. I think, I think that's, again, probably fairly fair. If, I was watch, if we were watching Bluey, that would be uh, that's fairly fair. <laughs> Always watching Bluey. All right, Mitch from the Dynasty Theory. What's up, buddy? What's up? How are you guys doing? Good. So, I, I have to admit, I didn't love this pick, but I went with this pick because I think it's how it's actually going to go in a lot of drafts here in a few months. And I went with Will Levis. And the reasoning behind that is I think he is going to end up being a top seven pick in the NFL draft. And it's not like he's a zero in the rushing department either. Like, if you look back to his Penn State days, like his... I'd prefer not to. <laughs> but his freshman year, like he did get nine rushing touchdowns, right? So it's not like he can't run the ball. And I think if you could get him in a decent situation, I think he's just providing enough over the veteran quarterbacks that you could end up having to trade that 104 for and, and to get him that I think he's just going to be a pretty good locked in pick right there. Yes. It seems like right now he's the front runner for the third most capital out of the quarterbacks. Um, and oh, it capital. seems to be locked into the first round and maybe even the Colts as early as four. Um, so I think you're on to something there. I think there'll be a, a heavy draft capital conversation on the round table here, probably uh, ad nauseum. But all right, so we got uh, <laughs> Bijan, we got Bryce Young, we got Stroud, we got Levis. We, we hitting the last quarterback here, John, or what, what's, the, uh, what's the pick for, for Mr. Bauer over there? You're sitting in your rookie draft at 105, and you're like, ah, for me, there's a tear break in between that fourth and fifth pick. And we're sitting here in February, and I didn't realize Christmas is coming early, boys. <laughs> I get Jameer Gibbs at the 105, and I know Mitch did it all for research purposes and talking points. I get it. You know, <laughs> he, he, he's a giver. But I'm sitting there at 105. I'm taking Jameer Gibbs, explosiveness. Uh, upside in the passing game. You guys know how I want my running backs to catch passes. I talk about it constantly. Uh, I, I, I We've talked about it on Dynasty Theory. Mitch, you have brought it up. I think he is a much better James Cook. And a lot of people, well, that, that stinks. You don't want to, you know, James Cook, look what he did. If you get Jameer Gibbs in an offense that is going to cater to his strengths, it's going to be... Uh, the, the the world is his oyster. The ceiling is going to be tremendous. So 105, Jameer Gibbs. Oh, my goodness. I love it. He loves it. Not There isn't too many like Gibbs out there. So, you know, I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a strong pick and strong value there. Um, all right. Wrap up 
the one through six, and then we'll each have another uh, pick through the first round here. Jason, who'd you take? Uh, now it's getting real interesting. Uh, I think that, you know, maybe those first couple of picks, you could argue moot jockeying those guys around a little bit, but uh, who, who, who do you got next? Is it a receiver? Is it a running back? What do you, yeah, last I, quarterback? I couldn't pull the trigger on the quarterback just yet. I mean, we're so early in this process. Hopefully none of you have your rookie drafts before the NFL draft because that's just <laughs> – dumb but uh <laughs> you got to see where these quarterbacks get drafted and and you know a lot a lot of people wasted a pick on Malik Willis if they had a draft early before the NFL draft so you need to you need to settle down and at least wait till the day after the draft is done which to me is still too early I need to let it breathe but so I, I wasn't ready to take the the next quarterback here although it's, I don't think that would be a bad pick because the rushing upside is, is is phenomenal with Anthony Richardson but I think you got to take a wide receiver here, and which one you want to take doesn't really bother me. Uh, I look, I, I took Jordan Addison, so we'll just cut to the chase. Uh, I, I could have taken Jackson Smith and Jigma. Catch me on the on the right day. I could take Quentin Johnston. I want a piece of all these guys. I think I have Addison a smidge ahead right now, even though I don't think that's really consensus. But I just love everything that Addison brings to the table. The only really knocks you can have on him or that his size so the sizes are mad and he doesn't have like elite long speed but the short area burst is phenomenal the suddenness is really in his movement he just is always open uh plus in the yak and he goes up and battles and contested catches his uh in 21 i think he was tied for third most contested catches in the league he blocks and he's just he's just always open and he's versatile he spent two-thirds of his snaps of his career in the slot but he proved he could win out wide as well i just love everything about jordan addison i don't think the size is that big a deal if that's your problem with him because the way the nfl has played in the passing league so i took addison i still feel good about it if you if you let if you let Devonta Smith slip through your through your fingertips here from being some highfalutin weightist, this is your chance at redemption, a little Jordan Addison. <laughs> um, so a little Addison. So I, I'm next at the uh, 107 there, um, and you know I agree, Addison, JSN, and and Quinton Johnston are all kind of in a tier for me right there for wide receivers. Um, I think since you took Addison, I think I, I had to go Jackson Smith and Jigba here. He just seems extremely safe. You could you could certainly reach for the the ceiling of what could be uh, Johnston, who's might get the best draft capital out of all these wide receivers. But I think JSN's capital is going to be just fine. Um, you know, they don't make that many like Johnston, but you know, if you ask Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, they don't make many like JSN, uh, who is out there just dominating touches and targets and and getting flowers from two first round picks on his own team Zay I, flowers zay, zay flowers yeah well mm. oh. couldn't couldn't quite get him but i mean if, if zay gets the capital he's going to be right up in that tier for me for me too um but jsn just super safe he's going to come into the league he's going to be a, a, a maybe a you know a little bit better a little bit maybe keenan allen type just crushing volume um, in the right system. And I, I'm not super worried about just being locked into a slot. I think he's good enough so that when you move to two wide receiver sets, he's going to stay in and be on the outside. I don't think you have to take him off the field. So um, not did, really too worried about did it. Just fine playing outside in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, there we go. But there was a backup running back playing quarterback for the for the for the Utes. Yeah, what does that have to do with their defense, though? I don't understand. No, there's a backup running back playing cornerback. A corner, 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 corner back for, yeah. the, for Utah. That's so, a lot of people are saying that, that, that that's what that's what they're hot in the streets saying. Hmm. So JSN seven, uh, that fantasy guy. I'm next, you moron. No, it's oh, Matt. No, it's Matt. Sorry, Foreman. Yeah. I like the I like the under the breath shot there though. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried to say it directly into the mic just yeah. so you can make sure you could hear it. <laughs> Who you got? Uh, I did take Quentin Johnson. Um, the 108. Quentin. Yes. Quentin Johnson. RT. Quentin don't, Johnston. Don't be, you got to say the baby. All right, Jeez. Weezy F baby. Don't Please forget the, the F. Please say the is T. Is the F for front door? Mm, yeah. F is for, for for a lot of different things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I took the upside of Johnston here. Um, I couldn't pull the trigger on any of the running backs. I don't feel strong enough about them. I'm going to probably take the upside here on Johnston just because... Like you guys said, you, they, don't, they, don't, they don't make a lot of Quentin Johnstons out there. Unicorn and, DNA. Potentially. Say, potentially. Unicorn athletic athleticism that would be more appropriate. That's your DNA, right? 
dino DNA. Sorry, I yeah, can't help myself you. with Jurassic Park. All right, anything else? Quentin no, I just, I just, I just, I just, yeah, I think it's a pretty easy pick there. I don't know if if there's any d- disagreement there, but I, I mean, we're gonna find out. Save it for the round table. Who's next? Is it that fancy we got guy that now? Fantasy All guy. right, jump the gun, but but you're up. What you got, Terrence? All right, since since we picking right now with our draft capital, because I will say, if uh, Anthony Richard Richardson gets the you know first round draft capital, he's gonna be going a lot higher, and I I, I would be willing to pick him, but I, I have a I have a love for this guy Zach Charbonnet, you know, and I might I might be dying on this hill, but you know, if, if you haven't heard it yet, he is currently my number two running back. Mm. He is my number two. You know, he has everything you love. And the only thing that would get me off of that hill alone by myself is if he goes to the combine and bomb the combine. That's about it. But if he go to the combine and do what I think he could do, I mean, he have everything. Size, speed, he catches the ball. He has it all. So... That's where I'm at. JB, keep it for the round table. I, I love it, man. I, <laughs> if, if you if you want the RB here, I think I think and Gibbs yeah. and Gibbs is gone. I'll take Gibbs, but I mean, I like it, man. I'm, I'm Charbonnet is, is like you said, he's got everything. I'm 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 very into Charbonnet too. Charbonnet. I thought it was, thought it was Charbonnet. Nah, it's definitely Charbonnet. <laughs> Say it right. Nah, he's he's awesome. I like Charbonnet. We did it. We we recorded a Charbonnet rookie profile. We haven't dropped it yet. It'll probably drop after this video. So stay tuned. Uh, but. Yeah, I think I would have him RB3 as of right now, which we haven't... Ha- We're about to do Tucker and Gibbs, which Gibbs, I mean, you just put him at number two. You don't need to get silly with it, but uh, I, I, that, me anyway. Um, you know, maybe I'll dive into the all-22s and feel differently. Who, who's next? 110, Mitch. What you got? Is it? Is it fine? Are we going to get through the whole first round with any, without any Anthony Richardson? That was his first name drop over there. What are, what are we thinking? Nope, it's Anthony Richardson here. And it's, you know, I just look at how the dynasty landscape is now. If if anybody's been in startups recently, Justin Fields is going like late first, early second round in startups now. And as much as we could say, you know, he was in a bad position, he wasn't giving any pass catchers, like the team just wasn't good. He is still going that high after being that bad of a quarterback as a rookie. And... I know Justin Fields is a much better prospect than what Anthony Richardson is. I mean, that's just true. But the upside that Richardson can bring to your fantasy teams, and if you could just have him as a quarterback too, I think he's a guy who can end up doing enough on his feet and learning to get better accuracy, learning how to read the field better, throw the ball where it needs to go, right? But he's so athletic, I think he could be on the field and actually learn to do that. Just like Justin Fields did this year, hopefully Fields makes the step and hopefully Richardson does the same thing in the future. But right now, I mean, you tell me today I can only have one rookie quarterback for next year. Let's just say it's a redraft. You want a best ball. You're going for a million dollars, an underdog or whoever. It's Anthony Richardson for me. I mean, it's I just think he could provide that more than what the other guys can. I I agree 100 percent. It's going to come down to draft capital, but Mm -hmm. We'll we'll have that discussion here in a second, um, John. The uh, the second leg of the uh, dynasty theory pod. Um, who do you got here? One eleven. While you guys over at the FF Dynasty were having some technical difficulties, Mitch, Terrence, and I were talking about this guy. And there's the chance that the NFL doesn't like him as much as the dynasty community. But at one eleven, give me Sean Tucker. I know. There was, you know, there, there's some concern with uh, his, his size. People think that he he's going to weigh in a little bit less than maybe what's been listed. Um, there's also the concern with his efficiency. You know, but at Syracuse, that line wasn't that great. So I, I think that's the, the additional context when Woo. you start to get out. Out from the numbers. Context, baby. I love it, JB. With that said, some of the potential knocks on him, he's somebody that's heavily involved in the passing game. He was efficient compared to the rest of the players in his situation there at Syracuse. Um, I talked about this in the Dynasty Theory Discord earlier today, and I said if I'm going to comp him to somebody 
from an analytical perspective, you got to go back a few years from a rookie season, but Gio Bernard, and I know a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not a sexy player. He averaged over 13 points per game his first three years in the league. So if you can tell me today that I very well could get 13 points per game from Sean Tucker, uh, that's something that I would sign up for. So for me, Sean Tucker, 111. Uh, but I, again, I would like to see that day two draft capital. I'm going to be on the edge of my seat because I don't know <laughs> if it's necessarily going to happen. We're going to be, it's, just, it's going to be, I feel like this is going to be the draft that I've most seen or I've seen the most change after the, after the actual draft happens because the, the, the running backs are so deep and the NFL is going to change a lot of people's minds because of the draft mm-hmm. capital. And, and so it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how, how that plays out. I think we're all going to be on, especially that day two, day three, or that day, you know, the round two, three, that's going to be so, uh, so important for a lot of people's perspective on, on a lot of these running backs. Um, yeah, I think you're probably going to be safe there, JB. I yeah, think, I think so too. I think uh, maybe he weighs in a little light, but uh, he's going to crush the combine, right? He was a track star in high school, started late, didn't have any like bad habits, was just reading about Sean Tucker, and like he's going to crush drills. You know, he runs super fast, and he's going to he knows how let's, to run. Let's save the Tucker the love fest for standpoint. the uh, round table here. Oh, so I think that's going to help him keep his capital up, even yeah. if you know, like that's definitely going to help. So I, I think you're safe there. I'm next. I had last one twelve. Uh, who are you closing it out with? <clears throat> Jay Flowers, baby. I was super excited to have this man fall to me and just get to talk about him because I just can't talk about him enough. Uh, he was our first rookie profile that we did. And I don't know if we even gave him enough love on that one because it was our first one and we we're, you know, getting our feet wet with all these prospects. But just love everything about Zay Flowers. You know, uh, the sizes, again, they're, that's the only knock that you can – that you can have on him is he's, he's a little small but you know i don't and then weighed even he weighed in a little he weighed in four pounds heavier than he thought he was going to weigh in at, at the uh, shrine bowl and then good job also a little bit lighter or or, or smaller, smaller in height so a little bit bmi is going up uh do we care about wide receiver bmi we shouldn't at this do point, we jb do we care about wide receiver bmi no word we better not word i certainly <laughs> no, they, don't they, I there was far less to. correlation compared to hitting certain thresholds for running backs. So for wide receivers, I don't look at it at all. Awesome. So this guy is like a <laughs> this guy's like a joystick on the field, you know? Like he's so when he gets the ball in his hands, you're like, oh fuck, what's gonna happen? Like he's he's a threat to house it at any point. Uh talking to Riley, he said Riley Juker or uh, Riley Juker, that's one of the patrons. <laughs> Riley Bymaster, uh Shrine Bowl Scout was there, watched him, got to got to see him live and said he was the fastest person he'd ever seen in person. And he said he's going to just light up the 40-yard dash, which if he does that, you know, I think that's going to pretty much give him first-round draft capital. I, I'm, I'm thinking he's or going to the day, end. Day I think he, I'm going to say it. He's going to end of the first round. And Riley pretty much oh. – Riley guaranteed it. Like, he gave me a <laughs> plus 90% – Guarantee that Zay Flowers was going in the first round, and and you I heard it here first. Guarantees. I don't see why not. <laughs> uh, but is that a little box? Stu Finer? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna shit on your bookmaker. <laughs> winners, we got winners. I don't know if y'all know Stu Finer, but just go check out. If some you don't, you should fucking short clips on Stu Finer. <laughs> he's back in the day. He was like a gambling guy. And he just still yells. Is. Know he's, he's, still on, is. he's on bar. I guess now. he's still giving advice on gambling, but I wouldn't. Took take a long it. break in between there, though. <laughs> I just want to hear him yell, I guess. Yeah. But Zay Flowers, I mean, the change of direction is impeccable. Uh, the start and stop ability. He's also always wide open. He plays much bigger than his size, even though he is a little small. He plays very physical, and the yak is amazing. You know, probably yak king of the year for sure amongst this class. Uh, Best with the ball in his hands. I haven't seen anybody better. Uh, The character is a plus. Like, this man has a a ridiculous work ethic, strong family base, gave up multiple six-figure deals to not leave Boston College um, because – you know, he finishes what's he st- what he started, which might be the other knock on him was that he wasn't an early declaree. He did stay and finish out his career at Boston College, but uh, I- I'm not too worried about that either. I don't know how much how much stock you put in the early declaration there, uh, JB. He can't break all the records at Boston College if he don't stay. So, yeah, <laughs> which <But>. he did. <laughs> anyway, super excited to take Zay Flowers. I'm not sure what I would have done 
had he gone already. I guess probably taking Tucker, but <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's wrap this one up, and we'll move over to the round table. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Appreciate you joining us, and uh, make sure to check out the round table discussion to get a little more in-depth analysis uh, through the crew here. Yeah, so. fine. You guys want to run through your Twitter handles one last time here? We got that fantasy guy. What's your what's your Twitter handle exactly? That one fantasy guy, and you can find me on YouTube at that fantasy network channel. All right. Dynasty Theory, fellas. I'm at Dino MC, and I'll let John plug the rest. At the Bauer Club, and then Dynasty Theory uh, YouTube channel, Dynasty Theory Patreon Discord, and then at Dynasty Theory FF on Twitter and the Gram. What do you guys do over there? A lot of theory? <laughs> A little bit of theory. Talk about food sometimes, <laughs> even though I have the the palate of like a five-year-old. So A lot of chicken fingers and ketchup. <laughs> If you want to talk about chicken Ranch. fingers, <laughs> yeah. I'm your guy. Yeah, all right. I'm, wait, but I, I prefer them to be referred to as tendies. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with chicken tendies. <laughs> own it. Just own it. Yeah. Should have got out of here. Well, we appreciate right. y'all for joining us. Be sure you go check out their uh, their their platforms and channels and Twitter handles. Great follows. Can't thank y'all enough for joining us. If you're listening on the podcast, let me, let me get a five-star review on the iTunes or the Spotify. And uh, definitely hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Appreciate y'all for joining us. Uh, let's go uh, make fun of each other and see who really fucked up during this draft. All right. Peace. All right. Let's, let's get it rolling. So you guys are good. Everybody's good. All right. Cool, 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 cool. They've been ready, Casey. Well, I we, we dropped in on a sex party and, you know, <laughs> and then then somebody's team was dying next time we came back. I don't know. <laughs> Is there a correlation? I don't know. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to play the no music. music. You okay. just go. Yeah. All right. Here we go.